Ryan Faircloth here with Junk Clean Dumpster Rental of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Today we have Jason Painter of uh, Green Thumb Nursery, right? Green Thumb Nursery yeah. Business is Chattanooga Botanical Distributor. Yeah, so what, what are we sitting next to here? All right, so uh, here and all throughout this field, uh, we have uh, what is known as industrial hemp or hemp uh, that is from the cannabis plant that uh, this particular grow is going to be used for processing or for smokable flour here in Tennessee, and that's how you get the other cannabinoids that are not THC. Okay, so this is legal now in Tennessee, right? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, so what's the difference when THC and CBD, and okay. so yeah, how can so, you grow this legally? Right, so uh, it's all cannabis, and then, uh, you know, essentially humans are what makes the difference between hemp and, uh, and marijuana. So uh, legal hemp in the U.S. and in Tennessee is anything less than 0.3 THC. Okay. okay. Now, uh, there are uh, other areas uh, in the country where they dis distinguish between delta 9 THC and max THC and things like that, but okay. you know, less than 0.3, that's that's the magic number there. So, I mean, it sounds like you know what you're talking about. When, what, when did you start in agriculture? Uh, so, this is my parents' business. Uh, okay. They've been here 43 years. Uh, 43 years. nursery. Okay and greenhouse production. So this is a, a part of the business we added on to uh, this summer, okay. but uh, the rest of the nursery is up front there. You know, the retail plants, the mm. ornamentals, those kinds of things. So uh, I grew up doing this business. Uh, I have a degree in horticulture from uh, University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Okay. Um, after that, I came back and, and uh, you know, worked in the business for about five years or so. So what, like, is this your first year of growing? And then, so now I'm back and uh, yeah, this is, uh, so hemp has been legal in Tennessee since 2014, I believe for a few years now. Okay. Uh, this year I, with the popularity of CBD um, and you know, honestly, uh, where the medical marijuana and the adult use marijuana, where it seems to be going, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're seeing a lot, a lot more growth. So uh, yes, this is the first year we got into it. And so you have different was it called strains or different varieties yeah, back different through varieties, here? Yeah, different strains, you know, whichever uh, word you want to use there, but that's right. So uh, this particular variety here is uh, box wine. Uh, it's from a grower in uh, South Carolina, uh, but you'll see a lot of them, uh, especially like some of these girls behind me here, um, is more, a lot of these varieties are based off of West Coast plants, you know, West okay. Coast obviously uh, being where uh, that's been more accepted the okay. practice of cultivating cannabis. So um, a lot of uh, everything you see here is kind of a, a West Coast based deal. Okay. Um, and then as we get more and more into it here in the Southeast, you know, we'll start coming up with our own cultivars. So we talked the other day um, about your plants and stuff, and you told me you have a problem with people sneaking in here and ripping them out of the ground. So if they rip one out of the ground, what are they basically getting? Uh, well, so even if they were to come and get this girl as... Uh, if they don't get stopped by this, your security. That's right, <laughs> yeah. yeah. By our guard dog and our yeah. trip wire and, you know, we may have explosives planted around. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you know, enter yeah. at your own discretion. But uh, anyway, um, so this one is pretty pretty far developed. It's probably another two to four weeks and we'll cut it, okay? But if someone comes in here tonight and cuts it down, which is the problem we're having, Yeah, um, they're getting it too early. So uh, they're really not doing themselves any more of a favor than they're doing us. Plus, I think people need to realize, like, I don't, you know, you you look at it and you think, oh, this is marijuana, but it will not get you high. Like so, marijuana. yeah, they're not going to get high. They're going to go home and smoke it and probably be right. a little pissed off later. <laughs> yeah, or I mean, whatever. especially <laughs> when they figure out that, you know, they still have to dry and cure this. Yeah, so gotcha. It's so, still got yeah. a little ways. There, there's a lot more input that's needed in this plant okay. for it to be able to go to market. Got you. And it's not, and it's not, there, there's no THC necessarily. It's more for the CBD, right? That's right. Correct? That's right. Okay. So when we get, uh, actually we're doing it now. We are uh, having samples sent off and getting, uh, getting ready to have COAs for these things. Okay. Um, but we will, uh, we'll know how much with the percentage of CBD um, and see, it's not just CBD. It's there's CBG, CBA, CBN, CB, okay. you know, just put a, constant on there basically that's what gotcha. there is so uh so we're, we're gonna have an idea what the profile is because you know really even as good as this looks it, it may only be three to five percent cbd you know we're looking for at least the low teens gotcha so like like i'm touching this here 
like what is that that's making it sticky yeah right so uh when you really look at the plant you know what you'll see is the crystals there uh -huh. which are the trichomes okay okay and then you also have what they call the terpenes but that's just more the smell okay but uh it's everything really is in the trichomes you know all the all the cannabinoids that you're trying to get so that's is uh, that would that be part of the oil that, uh or? so this has to be processed further to actually be the oil that you would get out of the store like okay the tincture gotcha or uh you know if you even uh consumed it like in an edible or something there's still some more steps that have to be done for that to work um you know like i said this is still a pretty young bud so it needs a couple more weeks to develop um on the plant and then it needs some drying and curing and then from there you can either start uh processing it extracting it mm. and turn it into oil or you know be ready to smoke okay so like when I see this place, I walk in here, I'm thinking immediately of the movie Cheech and Chong where the aliens come down into pasture and take all the, <laughs> right. the plants. So that's yeah, exactly yeah, what I yeah. think because I just remember that movie vaguely right. so much. So, uh, Man, that'd be kind of cool if it happened. Yeah, you don't have any aliens, do you? Yeah, that's no. Right. Yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if that happens, I hope I'm here to see <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So anything else you want to talk about about this plant or these plants? Like you're about to go to harvest, right? Uh, yeah, so we're getting real close to harvest. Like I said, we're two to four weeks probably on this one. Uh, some of the other ones back behind us aren't as developed, but you can see they're starting to put buds out. Okay. So, uh, um, yeah, we're just getting ready for harvest. Um, uh, there's so many things I could say. Uh, yeah. I know a lot of people are looking to get into this, and I think it's, it's a great time. The prices are high. The demand is high. Um, it's... In a relative uh, big picture sort of way, it's pretty easy to do. Okay, yeah. but with that too, um, you know, it, it's a lot of work. It's not yeah. complicated, but it's a lot of work. Well, I've I've seen some other grows that didn't look nothing like this, legal grows, and uh, but you've got forty years behind you. That's on, right. Yeah. On this, so on, on uh, agriculture, you know, it is our first year in cannabis, but yeah, we basically took our forty plus years of experience and just inserted another crop into it. Gotcha. So, um, you know, so far so good. We definitely have had our issues um, and, you know, we're learning just like everybody else and you constantly will. It's just what agriculture is about. Okay. So like one plant like this or any of these plants, how, how much water does one take a week? So right now, probably with this girl and most of these out here, um, you're talking, uh, we're probably doing at least a couple gallons every day. Now, we don't always water every day, but uh, what I'm getting at is we probably are about that 10 to 15 gallons of water a week. Per know? plant. Yeah, yeah now okay. it's been real hot and dry here lately. Yeah. So uh, it may be just a little, a little higher than that, but the cannabis plant is very forgiving in, in dry conditions. If yeah. you want it to be optimal, you know, like we irrigate these plants. So, uh, you know. The more inputs you put into them, the better results you get, that's for sure. But right. at the same time, it's mother nature. You know, she can pretty much take care of herself as well. So, so you know, you rented some dumpsters from us right. at Junk Clean. Um, you used it for a, ha a building that's up behind here mm -hmm. um, to clean it out. And what's that building going to be? Yeah, so uh, over there we got uh, our drying and curing facility. Okay. Um, which... Uh, facility is being uh i guess rather professional about it you can see like it looks pretty abandoned and dilapidated <laughs> but uh what we did is it was a house that was abandoned for probably 10 years or so and the previous uh, residents were very hard on it okay? okay so there was not a residential home there to inhabit anymore but it was like hey this is a great place to dry and cure we right. need a climate controlled area okay so there was a lot of a lot of good things left to it. So uh, what I'm getting to is we went in there and gutted everything out, and that's where the dumpsters came. From. Okay. So this is where we'll be where you hang it. Right. So we uh, have tried to go in where we can and gut all the walls and re-insulate, um, and we were just trying to you know get get more of a solid uh, envelope in this house. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had to. We've had to kind of customize the plan a little bit, let's say, because, uh, you know, originally it was just to make it all wide open, but we're a little concerned about taking away some of the support, obviously, oh, yeah, you yeah. know? Yeah. So we 
left uh, we left the, the studs. So. Yeah. But we just went back in and put up these walls just just as hangers for these clotheslines. So. Okay. Cool. So it'd be more like I mean this is what we're looking for here. So. Um, okay. So you just cut it off, trim yeah. it, and it hangs there and dries. So we cut it, and you know again you can see like this. I, I guess this whole line right here is one plant. Okay. Okay. So you saw out there how big those plants are, but now look how much material we actually pulled off of it, okay? Yeah. Now, in all fairness, this was a smaller plant than what was out there. But um, anyway, you know, you don't get, you only get a third of the plant if you're lucky. So, but anyway, we'll cut it and uh, get as much material off of it as we can just in a quick go and then hang it up there. And then, so it'll start drying, which it is, and these outer leaves are getting crispy. So that... Like that's where you'll get it trimmed, okay? You get it all trimmed, and then, well, actually, first we, we get it trimmed, and then we're gonna put it in these containers. These are sealed containers, and uh, in this, we're just letting cure, okay? So that, like, the curing is a really important process. Um, that's where you start getting a lot of the flavor back into it. Uh -huh. Um, because if you, you know, like just like this sits, if you taste it, it's going to like have that heavy chlorophyll taste. So we're trying to get rid of that. We want the proteins to come back into it. So. Okay. Knock, knock. What's up, Trey? What's up, dude? So this is Trey. Okay. This Good is Brian, yeah. where we got the dumpster from. Yeah. And then Trey is what we're calling the grow master here. Okay. okay. So like Trey came to us back in June, I guess it was, and I had a, I had the grow going in a certain direction, and he's like, no, we need to do all smokable flour, okay? And smokable flour is more high value deal. So uh, anyway, he's got us steered in this direction, plus um, he's out there keeping everything pruned and managing our drying and curing process, which is like, it's just so pivotal, okay? like. This is where it will make or break you gotcha. in having stuff to put out to market. So yeah. if this doesn't work, then we're screwed. We don't have anything. Yeah. Okay. So the last little bit is, and these aren't exactly the best nugs, but um, essentially that's what we're going to end up with. We're going to go from this down to this. This has been trimmed and cured. Okay. Can I smell that? Yeah. And see, you don't really get the heavy chlorophyll taste in it, but... We're still looking to get a lot more terpene, a lot more smell out of it. So, so what happened with that is <clears> there <throat> wasn't enough fresh air exchange in the room. Okay. So the chlorophyll kind of stuck around in the drying process. It didn't really dissipate and uh, the terpenes all just broke down. So you can smell it when you break open the bud, but that's not really what I would consider to be like primo top gotcha. shelf. You know, so how do you get that? I filtered out. So Why? we're going to get exhaust fans in here. Okay, that's what you're talking about, yeah, exhaust and, uh, fans. We're going to get fresh air exchanging all the time in here. Yeah. And uh, that's going to help slowly dry out the buds so the ter the chlorophyll breaks down and goes away, but the terpene stays solid. Okay. So there's a lot of science behind this, then, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like uh, it's trimming. science figured out through, do it for, through just trial and error, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. people figured it out. It's not like... It's just ob obvious shit that people are making making scientific. Like, yeah. We spray a lot of horticulture oil out here, mm -hmm. and uh, that's due in part to keep it organic, to keep it clean. You know, because like I said with the COAs, we want to test and have a you know a, a safe product. That's what the market's into, right? Okay. So we want to put out there what the people want, obviously, and they want like something safe and clean. And so anyway, we've been using this horticulture oil. Well, the problem with horticulture oil is with as hot as it's been lately, um, it can burn the plants. And oh, it can burn. if when we made the application, these were like just at that stage where they are so fragile and we hit them and stunned them. So okay. lesson so, learned, I think, you know. So what's this one? Okay, so over here, this is wife. Now this is looking really good, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's getting there. Yeah, so... Uh, so, man, we got uh, one, two, three, these four strains we got from the Mayfield Farm uh -huh. up in Athens. And if you look down these rows, like you can see, they're all about the same size, okay? Right. Every variety. And it's all stayed really consistent, which is awesome, especially like in the, from the nursery greenhouse uh -huh. uh, 
you know, person that's in my DNA, like uniformity is just what you strive for. So okay. I'll tell you what, these plants are looking awesome, man. And see, we lost some of these hurricane hemp. That's where these blanks are because there's a uh, vascular root fungus that these things get that you just can't do anything about. All you can do is just pull it up, you know, so. Um, it's like these look like little Christmas trees. These are. <laughs> yeah. That's right, man. That's more like, wow, that's like. Yeah. And see, uh, so we are having some caterpillars too. That's, that's where that's coming from. But uh, anyway, um, what you'll see is as this comes on, it'll all get full, right? Okay. And it'll be what they call the cola. Okay. So um, everything, a lot of things on this plant are not going to be consumed. It's basically just the bud and the sugar leaves. Okay. Not the fan leaves. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not the fan leaves. But just the sugar leaves, and this you know sugar leaf is like kind of a name because you can see the crystals on the leaves. Yeah, right? and when this buds out more, you're gonna trim. This will be all trimmed off, and, and be trimmed up, and yeah. it'll be like that manicured, uh, you know, typical bud that you're that you're looking for. So, mm. but yeah, I mean, you know, you see, like, it doesn't just happen easy, man. I mean, yeah. caterpillars get out here. So you gotta work these things usually oh, every day. Yeah, yeah. You want to go check out the greenhouse? Yeah, let's check out the greenhouse. <laughs> so go over these. What? Why are these in pots? Yeah. Okay. So or, uh, this uh, first row out here is from our mother stock. So you can see like it's fuller, but truthfully, they're not doing as good as uh, what's in these other containers. So these are 45 gallon containers. Uh, over here, everything else was in 25 gallon containers. The original plan was to do a certain size grow. We got into this starting in February, and by like the first of April, I realized like, you know, this right here is not enough. You got to scale up, okay? That's why we ended up adding that property out there that we were at earlier, and mm -hmm. then we got another one back here behind the greenhouse, okay? And we got a year round grow going in here. I'll show you in just a minute. Okay. You know, the containers work, but they don't work. To the optimal uh what potential what the plant can do so you know, okay uh, let's learn on this i'm not sure we're going to do this variety in these containers again right but with that said we have a lot of other good ones that did well in containers so like this variety right here this is t1 and this is more the boutique smokable flower thing we're looking for but these do well in containers like they're more compact growth um, so so we could stick with these in containers. You know what this is like? You know what you're good at, Ryan? This reminds me of like Bob Vila. Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, what was that show? Uh, yeah, I can't remember. I, mean, I, know, like, I know what you're talking about. You know, like you're nailing this host roll, man. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Crushing it. All right, so let's start in here because uh, this is the beginning. Okay, naturally, place good place to start. Um, Back here in the back are our rooted cuttings, also what is known as clones, okay, in this world. Um, so what we're doing is we're, uh, we'll, we'll take cuttings off of our mothers. These are our mothers all along the walls here, okay? okay? We'll go out there and we'll get a cutting, and then we'll come back in here and stick it down in the soil in this tray. And then these have been in quite a while now. They really need to be moved, which is something we're trying to work on right now. but. Anyway, that's about what you're looking for right So here, this is okay? a clone off one of those? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's the name clones. Okay. Uh, and then, so for our purposes, see, this is uh, September, whatever today is, September 13th, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. So we are beyond uh, any kind of outdoor planting deal, all right? Right. Because of the light cycle. Yeah. So what we're doing these for right now are for indoor grows or for our greenhouse grow that we got going next door. So okay. we'll come over here, we'll start the cuttings, and then they'll get bumped up into these gallon containers right here. Okay. Okay. And then they'll be in a veg stage. All right. So we're going to veg everything in here for 45 days. And what that means is that we give them the uh, right amount of light in here. Uh, and they're on about an 18 hour on, six hour off. Okay, so so they're getting natural light right now. Yeah. While these lights aren't on. Okay. And then about seven o'clock in the evening, these lights will kick on and they'll stay on until midnight. 
so that gives us about an 18.6, okay? Um, and then, uh, so we'll veg these for 45 days, and then we'll move them next door. So these, they go from here, or from that, it's a clone to here to here, and then they get moved over to the second greenhouse. Right. right. Okay. All right, so, uh, so this is uh, going to be our flower house, okay? Uh, we are still in the process of getting our year-round set up. When we do, this will be when the plants come over here to flower, uh, or when they come over here, they're coming over here to flower, all right? Right now, actually, we have to have these in veg because we just started this pipeline, okay? So we're just, we're trying to work it out. We're getting it up and getting the system cranking. Um, so what you'll see is everything in veg right now. But we are real close to cutting these lights off in here. And when we do, then it will switch over to the flower and we'll just go off the natural light cycle, which here in a couple of weeks will be 12 on, exactly 12 on, 12 off. Okay. Now, will they get that, how big will these get in here? Yeah, so, uh, so these probably got one more little shoot of growth on them, okay? So that, that may end up up there, let's say. All right, so we'll get another little bit. And then when they go to flower, they'll even put on just a little bit more now these aren't going to be as big as what you saw out there, obviously, because right. it's just in this one gallon container. Okay. Um, but this is only a 90 day deal. Okay. Uh, whereas that's like 180 days out there. Okay. Or 150. Okay. okay. Actually is the number. But uh, so what we're doing though, is we're just trying to pack this in here and do, you know, what is known as a sea of green. Okay. So like later on, we need to come in here and we'll set up these uh, essentially cargo nets all over this mm -hmm. so it'll support those buds so we still have work to do in here but you know we it, it's not gotten to the flower stage yet the cargo nest what do you mean like on the plants yeah so it'll be just they're like nylon uh made out of nylon string and they're like maybe two by twos or four by fours okay uh squares and then it will fit over the top of it okay lay on it kind of like a blanket but we'll come out here and support it so as the uh, plants grow up through it it will support its buds. Gotcha, gotcha. If you, you okay. know, when we were out there looking, yeah. um, you know, those buds get kind of top heavy. So in here, especially in this little thing, they really need to be supported. Okay, so, hmm. so you know, we still got some work to do and this is, this is still in progress. But in about two weeks, we'll, we'll turn this into flower because these and these bigger three gallons over here are just now putting out new growth. And it, it needs to be hardened off, okay? And by hard enough, I mean like right here, this is hard, right? If you touch it. Okay. Up here where this new shoot is, it's kind of soft and lush. You yeah. Know? So, um, so that's what I mean by hard enough. Okay. You know, another thing we'll look at doing is like, you know, we may send this bench for processing and then we'll save this bench for smokable. Maybe the next bench for processing, the next one for smokable, or maybe we'll put a whole run in here of all smokable or all processing. There's some variability there that we can do depending on market and everything. But uh, that is the uh, eventual idea where we'll get to is every two weeks we'll take a crop off of here. Okay, so like let's say this one's ready to go. We'll pull it off uh, and we'll dry it, cure it, you know, get it ready to go to market. And then that day or the next day we'll bring uh, another 200 or so in from over there. Put them in right here. Okay, two weeks later. We'll come in, we'll do the same process with this bench. Two weeks later, we'll do the same process with this bench. Two weeks later, we'll do the same process. So we'll be getting two turns out of this house every month. So all right, we're here with this plant. You got all this farm here. You got the greenhouses up there, the green thumb nursery. How do people get in contact yeah. with you? Can they come by and see you or yeah, can they come by, stop we by? Are, we are here Monday through Saturday, nine to five. Okay. Uh, so. You know, always welcome to come by and take a tour and, and ask questions. Yeah, come by during those hours, nine to five. Yeah. If you come after that, the security come guards will throw you out. Yeah, you might get tased. Yeah, you might get tased. <laughs> or step on one of our trip wires or something. Yeah. I don't know. Just saying. But, so, uh, and you're here in Hickson, Tennessee. Yep, we're yeah. 5431 Hickson Pike. Hickson in Pike. Hickson, okay, yep. cool. And the uh, best way to look us up is uh, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we also have a website. It's Chattanooga Botanical Distributors. So okay, what's your Facebook? The uh, page Chattanooga Botanicals. Chattanooga Botanicals. Okay. Uh, same with uh, same with Instagram and then okay. Chattanooga Botanical Distributors. Okay. Cool.